If you've broken the screen on your iPad Pro 11 2020, then in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace it. Starting off with the heat plate. This is set to 85 degrees C, and I've had it on here for about five minutes already, so the device is nice and warm. If you don't have a heat plate, then you can use a hairdryer or a heat gun to achieve the same effect. And then once it's warm enough, I'm gonna run a bead of isopropyl alcohol around all four edges of the screen. It's important to note that some displays can be refurbished. If the glass is broken and the screen is not damaged underneath, then these can be refurbished. So you want to be careful when removing them. In my case, the screen is absolutely foobard, so I'm not gonna to take too much time in getting it opened up. To remove the screen, I'm gonna just use a razor blade and I'm gonna get it in on this side, creating a gap between the edge of the glass and the chassis so that I can just lift it up a little bit, just like that. Now I'm gonna get a plastic guitar pick and I'm gonna run it into this edge, just like that. And then very carefully, I'm gonna pull through, cutting the adhesive away from the screen. Like I said, I'm not too worried about this screen getting any more damaged because it's already very, very broken. But just be careful around loose shards of glass because they can stab you in the finger and it hurts and it bleeds so just be careful with that i'm always sort of lifting up with the guitar pick as well to separate the screen and then i'll just carry on working i'm going to work along this right hand edge again now if there's bits where it's cracked and you can't get under it just lift it up a little bit more get underneath it and then when you get to this top edge you need to be very careful because there's a face id cable the proximity sensor is here and here on the ipad and there's a very thin cable holding that in place. So there is a risk of damaging that proximity sensor, in which case it will stop Face ID working on the device. So like I say, just be very, very careful. Now that I've got it lifted up on, along this edge, I've, I'm sort of holding it with my thumb as well, so that I can just lift it up and separate the glass as well as I possibly can. And then you can see there's a bit of glue there. I'll just peel that, that bit there peel that and then let me just show you this before i go any further because this you need to be careful of the screen on this opens up like a book however there is a very small flex cable just here that's very easy to break so leave it just a little bit ajar like that take it over to the workbench and we're going to carry on working on it so like i said you've got that dodgy little cable just here be very very careful of that so what i'm going to do i'm just going to separate the screen from the far edge and get it away from it like that and then that means that we can now slide the screen down a bit like that and then access those two screws that hold it down there. These are held down by a two crosshead screws. So simply remove them. And then I always store the screws. This is just my way of doing it. I always store them on the speakers because they're magnetic and I know where they belong at the end of the job then. So I'll store those screws on that speaker. Same with the shield. And then we can use a plastic prime tool to lift off and disconnect that flex. This now means we can open up the iPad and like I said, it opens like a book from the front cover and you've just got to be aware of these flex cables here. And the next thing that we're going to do is remove these three screws that hold down the shield under the screen flex cables or on top of the screen flex cables. These are also three crosshead screws, all of the same size. Stick them on the little magnetic speaker there. It's not going to do any damage to it as long as you don't poke it with your tweezers later and you can lift up this shield. So with that lifted, we'll just store that here. And then it's very important that we isolate power from the device at this point before removing the screen. So go ahead and remove the crosshead screw holding down the battery connector. And then you're going to want to use a plastic guitar pick just between the battery and the motherboard so that we can isolate power from the device. You can check it by pressing the power button, but I know that this is isolated. So I'm gonna use a plastic pick to remove the flex cables for the display and the two for the digitizer. With those two removed, we can separate it now and we can put this safely out of the way for in a minute. Before we mess around with changing the screen, it's important to make sure that the chassis on this is nice and clean. You can see we've got glass, we've got glue, we've got all sorts on there that needs to be cleaned up and moved off before we go any further. The easiest way to clean it up is using one of these number 17 X-Acto blades, and we're just gonna run the blade along the edge, cutting off the glass, the glue, the gunk that's left behind, making sure that it's nice and clean. It's probably the most important job when doing an iPad repair, because 
how you clean up and prepare the chassis usually determines how well your new display will stick to the frame. Just be careful of any flex cables as, you, as you're cutting along the edge. You don't want to cut anything. There's a few grounding cables that connect to the chassis itself. I wouldn't cry about it too much if one got cut, but you want to obviously avoid it at all costs. Same when you're working alongside the battery. Obviously, you don't want to go poking a hole in that with your blade. But I'm not going to fill this video with health and safety disclaimers. Just be bloody careful. I say that and then we're going to talk about the Face ID module. Just be super careful when you're running the blade in front of the cameras. Because you've got the Face ID, you've got the infrared cable, you've got all the important stuff up there. But once you've worked your way all the way around, you should find that it looks something like this. And it's not going to be perfect. There might still be little bits of glue, there might still be little bits of dust. And the easiest way to clean that up is with some acetone on a dry wipe or dry room wipe sorry and you're just going to run it right into the corner to clean as much of the gunk off as possible what i find with acetone it does a great job of dissolving the glue rather than just moving it about softening it like isopropyl alcohol does be careful on any plastic components of course because it can also soften and damage those but you'll find that it leaves a really nice clean surface for the new display to stick to so now that that's all cleaned up and looking pretty nice we've got an optional step here and that's to use some tape primer just to help the new adhesive stick down i know for a fact that not everybody has this in their workshop so don't worry if you don't have this this is just an extra step that i always do when doing these repairs but yeah it just it just adds an, an extra layer of stickiness it helps it stick and last for a long time but like i say it's optional that's the, it's not cheap so now that that's all prepped up, we're going to put it to one side. We're going to get the old screen now, and we've got two things to remove from this. First of all, we need to remove the two cables for the LCD, and they're hidden under this little shield here. So remove those two screws and lift up that shield, then use your plastic spudger to disconnect the two cables just here. So now we're going to go up to the top of the screen now, and we need to remove this flex cable here, which holds the ambient light sensor proximity sensor here and microphone the easiest way that i've found that we can remove these is by getting up with the number 17 blade of course getting right underneath them and sliding it underneath just like that you can now repeat the same on the microphone just get underneath it be careful of the flex cables do the same on proximity and then we'll move over once we've got this up and then finally this last bit of the ambient light sensor I'd recommend using a heat gun or a hairdryer. And you're going to set it on a low setting just so you can get underneath the flex cable and lift it up. You should find it comes away quite easily. If it's quite difficult, use a bit of isopropyl alcohol to help you. But that comes away very simple and just peels off. You can now discard the broken screen using your local recycling facilities and then for this cable, I always add a little bit of tesser tape onto it. I only ever have five mil in stock, but three mil would be better. In all honesty, it's not gonna make a world of difference because it's gonna be on the back of the screen and you're never gonna see it again. But yeah, just plonk a bit of three mil, five mil double-sided tape on that cable. That was a good lucky guess that it was bang on the right length. We'll get hold of our new screen now, which is a refurbished original display. And we're gonna peel off this bit of adhesive and we're gonna start by laying down the microphone first of all that should allow the proximity sensor to line up in the right place and then work your way out to the ambient light sensors what you tend to find is like look it's moving around a little bit but it's fairly rigid it's not going to move anywhere once it goes into the housing it's going to sit flat it's got something that sits behind it it's going to push it up so don't worry about gluing them down too bad we used to spend a lot of time with the UV glue sticking them, but you don't really need to. Now we're going to head back to the bottom of the display where we've got the two cables that we need to reattach. So we've got the long cable first. Make sure that it's plugged in nicely. Then you've got the short one on top of that. And then of course you've got the little shield and two screws that hold that down into place. Just like that. Just a little side note, you might find that some of them don't have the shield on there. In, if, if it doesn't have that on, you'll have to take it from the old display and pop it onto the new one. Make sure that the battery is still isolated. 
and then we're going to very carefully lay down the digitizer cables first because they sit at the bottom line them up carefully and make sure that they connect all the way in you should get a little clicking sound once they're in place same again with your lcd cables and then you can remove the battery isolating pick now re-secure the battery connector make sure these push down i always give it a little push either side as well just in case it's got a little bent from the from the guitar pick then we'll put the metal shield back on screws and of course re-secure those three screws with those re-secured we're going to move back up to the top just to add a note that you will find that if you turn it on at this point face id won't work until this is connected here so for the sake of the video i'm just going to reconnect that first of all you're going to fold the screen down a little bit and then you're going to line up the connector it can be a bit fiddly this and then just squeeze it with your finger sorry you can't see that but give it a squeeze make sure that it's plugged in right you can then lay the ipad down pull it back a little bit like that and then drop your shield into place the long screw on this one goes up the top and then the short screw down in the bottom make sure that it's screwed down properly and then you can line it back up so now that this is all back together we can power it on and we should get a apple logo now that's always good news what a relief and we're just going to obviously it's best to wait but i'll tell you a secret i've already tested this screen i know that it works so we're just going to peel off the back of the tesser tape on the back of the screen you might have to do it in sections make sure that it all comes off check your brightness settings as well Sometimes I've found that whenever these displays are shipped with Tessa tape, they can be covering the sensors for the ambient light sensor. Um, so just make sure that they're covered up properly. Now, all that we need to do at this point is we're going to stick the screen down, but I'm going to put it on the left-hand edge first. That's because there's cables there and it needs to tuck under the chassis a little bit. So make sure that it tucks under there. Apply some pressure. When using glues to stick these screens down, it takes a little while for them to actually cure. But if you use the tesser tape, this is ready straight away and it's good to go. That just about completes this video on how to replace the front screen on the iPad Pro 2018 or 2020 actually. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.